If you ever sit down after supper and watch the evening news, you'll often see a story about some accident or incident that happened in your community. Alongside that footage will be a reporter getting an interview with people who saw the whole thing happen. You hear how the event impacted them. It will make the whole thing a little more real when you hear someone tell their point of view on what happened. I remember when I was in college, I read a book called The Hiding Place, which was the story of Corey Ten Boom, who survived concentration camps in World War II Nazi Germany. I remember reading those words and feeling the impact of what she went through and her journey to forgive. But a couple of years ago, I found an audio clip online of her telling some of the stories from the book. Reading her story was one thing, but hearing her tell the story, giving testimony to the hurt and pain she had experienced and God's grace helping her triumph over it, hearing her tell that story was powerful. Broadway Church is a place that is deeply involved in our community. We run a food bank and we have programs for different ages. We send money to other countries to do good, to build schools and drill freshwater wells. But in all of our doing, we don't want to miss the important truth that Broadway Church is a congregation of people. Each one of us here today at all three of our campuses also have a story to tell of how God has been at work in our life. For the last 10 years or so, we have taken a Sunday in December to intentionally tell some of these stories in our God at Work Sunday. I know there are many people who could give testimony to God's work in their life in 2022, but we don't have time to tell all of their stories. Today, we will focus on three, and you will hear those stories in their own words and their own voices. Now, when we are doing this, we are not trying to pat ourselves on the back. Sometimes our testimonies can get me-focused. That's what we're not trying to do. But what we are saying is God has done something here that we in our human efforts could never do. He's made something beautiful out of something broken. What we are celebrating is God's active presence in the life of a believer and paying tribute to the fruit that he has given. Amos Cambier is the person in our first video. Some of you may know him personally, where others may just recognize him as an usher at our Surrey campus. Let me introduce you in this way to him as someone described Amos this way. When I think of the word dedication, Amos Canberra is a man who encompasses and displays what this word truly means. Amos has shown selfless leadership. Amos and his wife Edith, who live in Surrey, are passionate and dedicated in their support of our new Surrey campus. Please listen to Amos's story of where he came from and how he has truly seen God at work in his life. It's it's a long story that you that is hard to put in in few words. Before I left the country, I was in prison for 18 months because I was a member of parliament. And while in that prison, I prayed that God, can you get me out of this prison in three ways? And I these are specifics. I said, God, you can make me escape this prison. You can make the government fall and they release all prisoners, or you can get me through the courts, court of law. And God did one of the, of the things. But I made a promise to God. I said, if you do one of this, God, it's been, it's been 18 months in prison, I will serve you. That was my promise. My name is Amos Kambere. Edith and I came from Uganda, fleeing conflict and bad governance. And we came to this country in 1992 with four little kids and with only five dollars in our pocket. So when I got to this country, immediately I said, God has now delivered me. God, I think I, I promised to serve you. And I went to Bible school in UBC. School of Theology. Did one semester at UBC, raising four kids. Edith is also going to school. And God rebuked me and said, who told you that to serve me, you will want to go to Bible school and be a pastor? And I stopped. I said, well, God, then show me how I will serve you because I want to serve you. Now, we found ourselves in a small church in Vancouver called VCC. 
that was affiliated to Broadway Church. And in 1993, one of the Broadway Church members called Larry Van Cleek informed Broadway Church leadership team under Pastor Hombi that there is a group of refugees that have come from Uganda and one of them has a family of four kids and their names were Amos and Edith Camberry. So Broadway Church reached out and sent us a Christmas hamper through the Royal Bank on Commercial Drive at that time. That was a seed being planted to us and that was God at work. From there, we knew that we had people supporting us. We naturally found our way into Broadway Church. I came to Broadway with that mentality of wanting to serve. I sat on the board for six years. That was service. Now I'm serving as an usher. That is service. So with me, what I prayed in that prison has been fulfilled. And 28 years later, we are still members of Broadway Church. So to serve is not to become a pastor. You can serve in any capacity. You can usher, you can be on the board. You can welcome people. And that's why I enjoy what I do at the Surrey campus as an, as an usher. That's a service to God. And when I served on the board, that was a service. And when we build a school in Uganda through missions, that is a service. So you can, God can use you in any way as long as you yield and obey. Thank you. What an amazing challenge that Amos faced in his life and yet stayed on course. Amos is a committed, pleasant, and knowledgeable Christian man who loves the Lord wholeheartedly and wants to serve him fully. He and his wife Edith have been such a support and strength both at the Vancouver campus and now as they serve in leadership at the Surrey campus. It's always a privilege to work alongside committed volunteers like the Canberras. The next story is about Dave Roberts. Dave has been attending Broadway Church since May of 2022. He has a moving story of second chances and what he is doing with his. In many ways, Dave's story sounds familiar to many of ours. There may be themes or feelings that you can relate to in Dave's story. God has been at work in Dave's life right from the start, even when he didn't know Christ. That's the God you and I serve. And just at the right time, Dave found Jesus, or more correctly said, Jesus found Dave. Let's take a listen to Dave's story. I was 29 and I had made a series of bad decisions. I had started drinking and using drugs quite often. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was in an addiction stage, but I was at a place where my life was kind of rolling around and and revolved around drinking and doing drugs and partying. And and, uh, just slowly my life just started to degrade into a place where I was just hopeless, was going to have no place to live. All of my friends didn't want nothing to do with me. My name is Dave Roberts. I am uh, originally from Didsbury, Alberta, around Calgary. That's where I was born, but I kind of was, uh, I kind of grew up everywhere in Alberta, kind of went all around Alberta my, my young life. I was working for a meat cutter in Northern Alberta, and he actually had hired a great Christian man. He was a meat cutter too, and I became his apprentice. We talked more about God than we did meat, but it was like the change that I really needed, and I think God knew that. So I began to listen to him and ask him questions about Jesus. He showed me the love of Jesus, and he was a kind man. And he allowed me to come stay with him when I was down and out and had no place to go. And that's where my life began um, to slowly become more Christ-like. I think throughout my whole life, Christ has shown himself to me, even when I wasn't following him. For a lot of years, I made decisions that excluded Christ. I did a lot of things that were very ungodly. 
but I don't think I really had a life or can remember a time when I didn't know God was really there. Before I was married to my now wife, Deborah, I had a slip up and um, basically I, I went to the casino. Before I had fully been born again, I really loved playing poker. And I thought, I wasn't married to Deb yet. And I still, I guess, had to sow some wild oats. I don't really know the whole reason why I did this, but my flesh just kind of got a hold of me. When we sat down with a pastor from Broadway after, me and Deb still, hadn't, still weren't married yet, and we prayed, and we decided that I wasn't integrating my life enough um, with Christians, and City Reach is actually a great, um, ministry that actually caters to a lot of different areas of of social development in that area. One is addiction, one is homelessness, one is hopelessness. And you know what? I think that that's kind of where I, w I, w I wasn't going towards um, serving God. I was more uh, involved in thinking about, you know, my upcoming marriage and my upcoming life. And I was scared, you know, so what did I do? I ran back to, for a short, very short period of time, I ran to a place where I felt like I'd be safe. And it was just basically a wake up call. As Romans 8.28 says, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And the Lord really used it to show me that I need to be more involved with with Christians, uh, um, I need to be more involved with um, being part of something that He's called me to be, and that's the homelessness. The very hopeless side of, of being homeless is something that God's really touched my heart. It seems like once you get that hope back, you get that drive back to live. And if you have no hope, if you have no hope for a future, then you don't really have a, a reason to like be happy in life. You know, you don't really have something to look forward to. You just kind of see life as a over and over and over redundant thing. And I think the City Reach really showed me that I could serve in that area. City Reach allowed me to become part of a, of a group that, that, that um, talks about their feelings, which is so important to recovery. Club Freedom was a way that I could serve. It's a way that I had a past and I was able to, to, to go to that spot. I was able to go to Club Freedom and talk to the people there and know exactly where they were at, know exactly how they had gotten there, you know, and know exactly how to get out of it, you know. And I think that that's why uh, Christ allows us to go through things sometimes in life so that we're able to help others in that situation to show them, hey, look, this is what Christ has done for me. This is what God has done for me. And he uses club freedom to do that. My whole life, I've been lonely. I've known that I've been missing something. Something in my heart has been missing. I've tried to fill it up with all this stuff in the world and it just never filled me. And that's what Christ has brought into my life. He has brought contentment. I, I, I'm living a good life. And that's what Christ brings. Wow, what a powerful story. Perhaps you can see yourself in Dave's story. Maybe you can remember what your life was like before you met Christ and how He's changed you from the inside out. You were given a second chance and you did something with it. Or perhaps you can even see yourself in the meat cutter, the man who spoke with Dave about Jesus. Maybe you're a person of influence and you are inspiring others to pursue Jesus. Let Dave's story challenge you and inspire you this season to take your life in Jesus and share it with others. Serve others. Get involved in someone's life. You never know how Christ may use you to influence others in the kingdom of God. Now, let's watch the story of Bob and Shannon Shalafu. God has been at work in wonderful ways in their lives over the last few years. I personally have been inspired by how they have let God search their hearts deeply and how they have been obedient and responded to him. Let's watch their story. 
So in 2018, there was a conference going on at POC convention, and Bob came to see me and said that his friend Dave and Eileen are coming into town. You remember Dave from years ago that we met at the church, and um, they were coming to the same convention, and can they come and stay with us? And I said, well, yeah, of course they can. And I remember him and his wife coming up and having dinner with us or breakfast or whatever it was and having lovely conversations. But I always felt this need to kind of be sort of away from Dave because I, of course, I was pushing God away. And um, I just felt that we were going to have these conversations. And again, I was being a bit rebellious with it. We ended up going downtown for dinner one night and uh, with um, Eileen's family. We were all together at one point, and then I don't know where all of you guys had went, but then Dave and I were by ourselves. <laughs> I was a matter of feet away from him. And all I can remember was him saying, Shannon, come here. And I thought, no, 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 no. I don't, I can't be doing this right now. But of course I have to be polite. He asked me, he said, what are you looking for? I said to him, so I'm looking for a place that I'm not going to be preached to, that I'm not going to be Bible thumped to, but somewhere that I can call home, somewhere that I can understand the message, somewhere that, you know, I just, I can go in and I can blend in with the crowd and yeah, I want to know Jesus and I, and I know that it's time. And he looked at me and he said, fair enough. And it was at this point that I knew this is when I was saved. On the Sunday, they had asked if I, if I wanted to go to church. Me being me, said, nah, I'm okay for now. So Bob went and it was Broadway that he came to. And that's when I, uh... I, I came to church with him, I think, on the following day. And uh, I think Pastor Darren preached. God had him preach on, on the same topic of uh, uh, forgiveness. And that's when I knew that... Uh, We're going to be okay. <laughs> yep. And here we are. Here we are. When Bob arrived back home, he said, you need to come to this church. The church is incredible. You will feel very comfortable. Um, it's exactly what you're looking for. So needless to say, the following Sunday, um, I walked into Broadway and I've never looked back. Pastor Emily had uh, come out and asked for individuals um, to really think, you know, think hard and see if they, they could give it their time in, in regards to helping out in the kids' ministry because they were short of volunteers. More or less what was happening um, was there was a, a lot of children that were coming down for uh, Sunday school and they inevitably didn't have enough people to volunteer, which in turn meant that they would have to turn the children away from um, coming in and attending. I remember uh, Bob and I looking at each other and we just said instantaneously, like, this is exactly where we need to be. We need to offer our help in the kids' ministry. And... Um, yeah, we never look back. We we love it. Uh, I totally remember that as well. And my thought was nobody, nobody should be getting turned away from hearing God's message. So, yeah. The moment we started volunteering here, I tell you, we gained a whole lot. Uh, I always thought that we would uh, we would lose lose time on hearing God's word, and uh, it's quite the opposite. We've gained so much more. It's such a blessing to uh, to volunteer, and it's probably like that for any position here. But these kids, uh, wow, what a blessing. I wish I'd done this 30 years ago. Yeah. In Bob and Shannon's story, I see God's never-ending faithful love for us. He never forgets us. He always pursues us. I love how they talked about how they have gained so much by serving. 
Have you considered serving at Broadway Church, but you're afraid to take a step? Do you feel challenged by Bob and Shannon's story? You know, there's a common thread in all of these stories. Each of these people felt a sense of brokenness and hurt in their life. In a very real sense, each of our videos today have been a story of overcoming hurts and pain from the past. And that leads me to our big idea for today. When God is at work in your life, the setback you've experienced can be the setup for what God is going to do in your life. Scripture reminds us of this in 2 Corinthians 1, where it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. The comfort that these people have received from God, they are using to comfort others. They are actively embracing the setbacks they've experienced as a setup for what God wants them to do and who God wants them to share his love with. I see this also in Romans 8.28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Maybe you've never experienced God's purposes for your life. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to forgive your sin and you've never decided to follow his teachings. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to do that very thing right now. Let's pray. If you're watching this today and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, you can just pray this prayer after me. Repeat it under your breath. It's not important that the person in the room hears it, but that God hears it and he knows that you mean business. Just say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm far from you and I want to come close. Please forgive me of my sin. Give me the strength to live a life that pleases you. Change me from the inside out. Give me the courage to tell someone about the decision I've made. In Jesus' name. And God, we thank you for the inspiration we draw from these stories. We remind ourselves, God, that you are constantly at work in our lives. You are constantly at work even when we don't see it. Thank you for what you've done in these lives in 2022. Thank you for what you're going to do in countless lives in Broadway Church and in every church in 2023. We believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for Church Online this week.